The year is 1959. The place, Green Haven Correctional Facility in upstate New York. This is where an unlikely friendship amongst three young gangsters sprang up. One from Brooklyn, one from the Bronx, and one from Harlem. This unholy trinity would have more effect on the day-to-day -day living of the streets of the Rotten Apple in the 1960s and 70s than perhaps anyone else. Names were Joey Gallo, Maddie Madonna, and Leroy Nicky Barnes. And for most of the following 20 years, they helped keep the streets of New York full of the most soul-enslaving drug ever, Big H. Joey Gallo was a soldier in the Profaci family at the time. Now the Profaci family eventually became what we know as the Colombo family when Joey Gallo and his crew tried to break away from uh, uh, Joe Profaci and there was something called the Colombo War. And in the end, Joe Colombo was the boss and it became the Colombo crime family. Joey Gallo was famously gunned down at Umberto's Clams in uh, Little Italy, a crime that Frank Sheeran of the Irishman fame also claimed he committed, but that's another story. When Gallo met Nicky Barnes, he was probably fresh off being the trigger man in one of the most important and infamous crimes in gangland history, the barbershop chair hit on Albert Anastasia, AKA the Mad Hatter, AKA the Lord High Executioner, head of Murder Inc., which was a pool of hitmen that all the crime families in New York and other cities used when hits were sanctioned by the commission. And Joey Gallo was probably the guy sent to execute the Lord High Executioner. And he and Nicky Barnes formed a uh, friendship in Greenhaven, Greenhaven and, and Gallo schooled Barnes on the uh, bureaucratic infrastructure of the Italian Mafia, which remember, I mean, even at that point was 80 years old, it's now 120 years old. The Italian Mafia sustains not because of the individuals, but because of the structure. And that's what he taught to Nicky Barnes and Maddie Madonna was in there with him at the time too. Madonna was not a made man at the time. He went on to become one of the acting bosses of the Lucchese crime family after uh, serving a long prison stint. And Madonna's friendship with Barnes blossomed in the 60s and the 70s as he became possibly for time the biggest heroin connect on the whole East Coast. After both of their release from prison, uh, Maddie Madonna, who was known as the Fat Man in Harlem, started supplying large quantities of heroin to Nicky Barnes. Uh, by the 70s, their deals were like something out of a black exploitation movie. Madonna would get, say, 20 kilos of untouched heroin, leave it in the trunk of a car in a parking garage. Barnes, Barnes is, well, Barnes himself usually would pick the car up have to shake a tail from the feds and then he'd, he'd uh, bring it to the the mills that he had operating to cut it up and then you know a day or two later he would bring a couple million dollars in the trunk of a car and leave it in a garage or on the street and Madonna would pick it up and usually these guys were doing those tasks themselves there wasn't an underling it was the connect or the plug whatever you want to call it themselves that were doing it. And it was based on Madonna and Barnes's trust of each other forged way back 1959, 1960 in Greenhaven in upstate New York. Maddie Madonna and Nikki Barnes continued their arrangement until 1975 when Madonna was arrested for bringing in, they're trying to move 10 kilos of pure China white that had just come in from Thailand most likely destined for Nicky Barnes. On December 21st, 1976, Matthew Madonna was sentenced to 26 years in federal prison. Nicky Barnes didn't get indicted for another two years or so, and he famously became an informant about three years into his sentence in 1981. In December of 81, while he was in prison, Matty Madonna received a summons to testify before a grand jury about narcotics activity in the New York area. In two appearances before the grand jury, Madonna refused to testify. 
even after being granted immunity from uh, uh, self-incrimination. And this was the same uh, national crime hearing that Nikki Barnes and kind of a uh, spectacle appeared uh, in court wearing uh, like a black Ku Klux Klan style robe and testified about the structure of uh, uh, the drug underworld in New York and other cities. And coincidentally, while I was in Detroit recently, Doc Davis, check out his stuff, Doc Davis was serving his prison term, or was it his brother Dwayne? One of them was in federal prison and they were there when Nikki Barnes was, was being um, taken to court and they walked him through the kitchen in his black robe and everyone looked and said, oh, there's Nikki Barnes going to testify. So Maddie Madonna refused to testify in the hearing that Nikki Barnes did and Madonna actually got 528 days tacked onto his sentence, uh, uh, two almost a well, year and a half for refusing to testify. And that's something to know, like, you can be compelled to testify. I've known a few people who got um, sentenced for refusing to testify. Case I was once involved in, uh, people were supposed to testify and didn't, and there was all sorts of threats, or testimony wasn't the way that uh, the prosecutor wanted, and we were threatened with perjury and other things. And I've known some people actually got, got sentenced for witness tampering, subordination of perjury. Um, so that happens and it happened to Maddie Madonna. If you invoke your Fifth Amendment right, they can give you immunity. And then you don't have a Fifth Amendment right. So you can kind of be compelled to testify or get contempt of court, etc. And, a, and a real, real gangsters would do that and Maddie Madonna Got a year and a half tat, uh, uh, added on to his 26 year prison sentence. In 1995, sentence. after doing about 24 years in federal prison for his case from the mid 70s, Maddie Madonna got out and as a reward for his silence, he was granted his button. He was made a made man in the Lucchese crime family. So when he had been out in the 70s, even though he was the go between for, who knows, hundreds of millions of dollars, between Nicky Barnes and other black dealers and the mafia. He wasn't a made guy then, but when he got out in 95, they made him. Not long after he was made, around 98, he got made into a, a, a capo in the Lucchese family. In the late 90s, after he'd been out just a few years and been a capo for a very short time, he caught, I think it was a gambling case, and he went in for a couple years and he got out in 03. After his release in 03, um, Lucchese's established a three-man ruling panel to govern the family. And Maddie Madonna was on that panel. Now after old boss Stephen Crea got out of prison, the panel disbanded and uh, Madonna was no longer an acting boss. And then in December of 07, New Jersey law enforcement arrested Maddie Madonna and 32 other members and associates of the Lucchese family a $2.2 billion uh, gambling racket. So Madonna gets out on bail for the 08 gambling bust. And then in October of 09, while out on bail, he gets indicted in a RICO case of the Lucchese family. And the specific charges were extortion, gun running, gambling again, uh, estimated $400 million in revenue during the, the time this RICO was investigated. So finally in June of 2015, Maddie Madonna pled guilty to his 07 indictment and he entered federal prison. So in, in 2017, uh, Madonna, who only ended up getting like three or four years, was about to get out of federal prison and he gets hit with yet another big indictment. But this one includes murder. And the murder was of a guy named Michael Meldish. Now, Michael Meldish is an interesting character from an interesting group called the Purple Gang, which i uh, probably do a story on. Now, they took their name from Detroit's Purple Gang, which was the only all-Jewish um, organized crime of the Prohibition era, who for a time ruled Detroit's underworld before the Italians didn't let Al Capone in. They were feared killers used around the country. They were part of the St. Valentine's Day Massacre that Al Capone uh, carried out in Chicago. And these guys 
uh, in, in East Harlem in the 70s, took that name on, and they were started off as drug dealers and became hitmen. They were in that whole melange of people with Maddie Madonna and Nikki Barnes, other black and Hispanic uh, heroin dealers in the 60s and 70s into the early 80s, I think. And then as that disbanded, a lot of those guys got to be made men in different families, but Michael Meldish was only half Italian, did On not. November 15th, 2019, Maddie Madonna, his boss in the Lucchese uh, crime family, Stephen Crea, a guy named Christopher Londonio, and Terrence Caldwell, who was the trigger man, got convicted in a White Plains federal court for executing the murder of Michael Meldish. And I thought this story would be interesting because, you know, we're just finding out that Netflix is going to do this um, movie, or I don't know if it's a series or a movie called The Council. Probably a big, huge budget, long movie like The Irishman was about Nikki Barnes. So Nikki Barnes is going to be in the, the news cycle and the entertainment cycle a lot. Will Smith is playing Leroy. And the ghost of Leroy Nikki Barnes made an appearance at Maddie Madonna's trial all the way in 2019, 50 years after he met, oh, no, I'm sorry, 50 years would be, oh, nine, 60 years after he met Nikki Barnes in Greenhaven Correctional when the federal prosecutors are trying to get Madonna to take a plea deal, they threatened to have Nikki Barnes come testify. Now, why they thought that would scare him for cases that were long after Nikki Barnes had become an informant in 1981, I don't know. Maybe Barnes knew about murders that Madonna did back in the 70s. But of course, as we just found out, Nikki Barnes has been dead since 2012. And uh, a lot of people in the legal community thought it was unethical of the federal prosecutor to threatened to bring someone who was actually dead, had been long dead, because Barnes had been in a witness protection since 81, and he had died in 2012, but because he died under the fake name and was buried, we don't, I think we still don't know where, uh, nobody knew. But uh, Madonna was hardcore, and he didn't take any plea agreement, and he ended up getting convicted with the other three guys of first degree murder. So Maddie Madonna, back in federal prison, um, he met Nikki Barnes in 1959, got out of prison in the early 60s, went back in 75. I mean, that was really his run from the early 60s to 75. So from 75 and 95, he was 75 to 95, he was in prison. He was out for a couple years, went back for a couple years, then was out for maybe 10 or 10 or 11 years, and then went back in and hasn't been out. So being the uh you know the plug and being a boss in a real mafia family isn't all fun and games it barely is fun and games at all nikki barnes along with madonna they had a given the fact these guys lived to be in their mid 70s mid 80s i mean they had a short period of life where they were living the good life off the proceeds of crime and they paid for it with lifetimes of incarceration so that's the story of Maddie Madonna, a.k.a. the Fat Man, Nikki Barnes' plug, and the ghost of Nikki Barnes almost testifying against him. American Dope.